Have you ever stopped to wonder if the world around you is truly real? The air you breathe, the ground beneath your feet, the very people you interact with. What if it's all an illusion? This may sound like the plot of a science fiction movie, but the idea that we might be living in a simulation is gaining attention, not just in pop culture, but in scientific and philosophical circles. Today, we'll explore the fascinating hypothesis that our reality might not be what it seems. Let's begin with the basics. The simulation hypothesis suggests that the universe as we perceive it could be an artificial construct, a simulation created by an advanced civilization. This idea was popularized by Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom in his seminal 2003 paper, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Bostrom presents a trilemma, arguing that at least one of the following statements must be true. Advanced civilizations never reach a point where they can create simulations of reality. Advanced civilizations that can create simulations choose not to do so. We are almost certainly living in a simulation. The third possibility is where the intrigue lies. If civilizations can create hyper-realistic simulations, and if they are capable of simulating conscious beings, then the number of simulated realities could vastly outnumber the one original physical reality. Statistically speaking, the odds that we are in the base reality become incredibly slim. But how does this idea hold up scientifically? Enter the realm of physics. Researchers like theoretical physicist Silas Bean suggest that there might be clues within the laws of nature that point toward a simulated universe. For instance, the universe appears to operate on discrete units. Think of them as pixels in a video game. The Planck length, the smallest measurable unit of space, and the Planck time, the smallest measurable unit of time, could be interpreted as the resolution of our universe. This granularity might suggest an underlying digital framework. Then there's the question of computation. Could an advanced civilization possess the computational power to simulate an entire universe? According to Moore's law, the processing power of computers doubles approximately every two years. If this exponential growth continues, it's conceivable that future civilizations could simulate not just a planet, but entire galaxies with incredible detail. Technologies like quantum computing, which leverage the principles of quantum mechanics, are already pushing the boundaries of what's computationally possible. Now, let's consider another layer human consciousness. If the simulation hypothesis is true, then what we experience as thoughts, emotions, and perceptions might be the result of sophisticated code. But how could consciousness itself, arguably the most complex phenomenon we know, be simulated? Neuroscientists have made remarkable strides in understanding the brain as a biological computer. Concepts like neural networks and artificial intelligence demonstrate that it's possible to replicate some aspects of human cognition. However, the leap from artificial intelligence to artificial consciousness remains a profound mystery. Skeptics, of course, argue that the simulation hypothesis is unfalsifiable. In other words, there's no definitive way to prove or disprove it. After all, if we are inside a simulation, any evidence we gather could itself be fabricated by the simulation. Yet, this hasn't stopped scientists and philosophers from exploring the implications. For instance, some researchers believe that cosmic phenomena, like anomalies in the cosmic microwave background radiation, could serve as evidence of a simulated origin. Let's shift gears and explore the ethical and existential questions that arise. If we are living in a simulation, who or what created it? Could we be part of a grand experiment? Or are we mere entertainment for a higher intelligence? These questions strike at the heart of what it means to be human. Does the meaning of life change if we're living in a simulation? For many, the idea is unsettling, yet others find comfort in the possibility that our existence could be part of something greater. 
Philosophically, the simulation hypothesis intersects with age-old questions about reality and perception. Plato's allegory of the cave described prisoners who perceive shadows on a wall as their only reality. In a sense, we could be those prisoners, mistaking the simulation for the real world. Meanwhile, René Descartes, the father of modern philosophy, famously pondered whether a malicious demon could be deceiving us about the nature of reality. Substitute the demon with an advanced computer program and you have a surprisingly modern parallel. So where does this leave us? Should we be worried about whether or not our reality is real? Perhaps not. Even if we are living in a simulation, our experiences, emotions, and relationships feel undeniably real to us. The pursuit of knowledge, the quest for connection, and the drive to create meaning remain just as significant. As theoretical physicist Max Tegmark suggests, whether we live in a simulation or not, our universe operates under consistent rules. For now, that is reality enough. In conclusion, the simulation hypothesis challenges us to question our deepest assumptions about existence. It compels us to think beyond the boundaries of what we can see, hear, and touch. Whether or not we are living in a simulation, exploring this possibility expands our understanding of the universe and our place within it. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of existence, one thing is clear. Reality, simulated or not, is more wondrous and complex than we could have ever imagined. What do you think? Does this idea fascinate or unsettle you? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to share it with friends to keep the conversation going. See you in the next video, whether it's real or a simulation. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe for more intriguing topics, and tap the bell to stay updated.